The Sentence of the Inquisition on Galileo Galilei. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sentence of the Inquisition on Galileo. We, the undersigned, by the grace of God, cardinals of the Holy Roman Church, inquisitors general throughout the whole Christian Republic, special deputies of the Holy Apostolical Chair against heretical depravity. Whereas you, Galileo, son of the late Vincenzo Galilei of Florence, aged seventy years, were denounced in 1615 to this holy office, for holding as true a false doctrine taught by many, namely, that the sun is immovable in the centre of the world, and that the earth moves, and also with a diurnal motion, also for having pupils whom you instructed in the same opinions, also for maintaining a correspondence on the same with some German mathematicians, also for publishing certain letters on the solar spots in which you develop the same doctrines as true also for answering the objections which were continually produced from the holy scriptures by glosing the said scriptures according to your own meaning and whereas thereupon was produced a copy of a writing in form of a letter professedly written by you to a person formerly your pupil in which following the hypothesis of copernicus you include several propositions contrary to the true sense and authority of the holy scripture Therefore, this holy tribunal, being desirous of providing against the disorder and mischief which was thence proceeding and increasing to the detriment of the holy faith, by the desire of His Holiness and of the most eminent Lords Cardinals of this supreme and universal inquisition, the two propositions of the stability of the sun and motion of the earth were qualified by the theological qualifiers as follows. First, the proposition that the sun is in the centre of the world and immovable from its place is absurd, philosophically false, and formally heretical, because it is expressly contrary to the Holy Scripture. Secondly, the proposition that the earth is not the centre of the world, nor immovable, but that it moves and also with a diurnal motion, is also absurd, philosophically false, and, theologically considered, at least erroneous in faith. But whereas being pleased at that time to deal mildly with you, it was decreed in the Holy Congregation held before His Holiness on the 25th day of February 1616, that His Eminence the Lord Cardinal Bellarmine should enjoin you to give up altogether the said false doctrine. If you should refuse, that you should be ordered by the commissary of the Holy Office to relinquish it, not to teach it to others, nor to defend it, nor ever mention it, and in default of acquiescence, that you should be imprisoned, and in execution of this decree on the following day at the palace, in the presence of His Eminence, the said Lord Cardinal Bellarmine, after you had been mildly admonished by the said Lord Cardinal, you were commanded by the acting commissary of the Holy Office, before a notary and witnesses, to relinquish altogether the said false opinion, and in future neither to defend nor teach it in any manner, neither verbally nor in writing, and upon your promising obedience you were dismissed. And in order that so pernicious a doctrine might be altogether rooted out, nor insinuate itself farther to the heavy detriment of the Catholic truth, a decree emanated from the Holy Congregation of the Index, prohibiting the books which treat of this doctrine, and it was declared false and altogether contrary to the Holy and Divine Scripture. And whereas a book has since appeared, published at Florence last year, the title of which showed that you were the author, which title is the Dialogue of Galileo Galilei on the two principal systems of the world, the Ptolemaic and Copernican. And whereas the Holy Congregation has heard that in consequence of the printing of the said book, the false opinion of the earth's motion and stability of the sun is daily gaining ground. The said book has been taken into careful consideration and in it has been detected a glaring violation of the said order, which had been intimidated to you inasmuch as in this book you have defended the said opinion, already and in your presence condemned, although in the said book you labor with many circumlocutions to induce the belief that it is left by you undecided and in express terms probable, 
which is equally a very grave error since an opinion can in no way be probable which has been already declared and finally determined contrary to the divine scripture therefore by our order you have been cited to this holy office where on your examination upon oath you have acknowledged the said book as written and printed by you you also confess that you began to write the said book ten or twelve years ago after the order aforesaid had been given also that you demanded license to publish it but without signifying to those who granted you this permission that you had been condemned not to hold defend or teach the said doctrine in any manner you also confess that the style of the said book was in many places so composed that the reader might think the arguments adduced on the false side to be so worded as more effectually to entangle the understanding than to be easily solved, alleging in excuse that you have thus run into an error, foreign, as you say, to your intention, from writing in the form of a dialogue and in consequence of the natural complacency which everyone feels with regard to his own subtleties and in showing himself more skilful than the generality of mankind in contriving even in favour of false proposition ingenious and apparently probable arguments and upon a convenient time being given to you for making your defence you produced the certificate in the handwriting of his eminence the lord cardinal bellarmine procured as you said by yourself that you might defend yourself against the calumnies of your enemies who reported that you had abjured your opinions and had been punished by the holy office in which certificate it is declared that you had not abjured nor had been punished but merely that the declaration made by his holiness and promulgated by the holy congregation of the index had been announced to you which declares that the opinion of the motion of the earth and stability of the sun is contrary to the holy scriptures and therefore cannot be held or defended wherefore since no mention is there made of two articles of the order to wit the order not to teach and in any manner you argued that we ought to believe that in the lapse of fourteen or sixteen years they had escaped your memory and that this was also the reason why you were silent as to the order when you sought permission to publish your book and that this is said by you not to excuse your error but that it may be attributed to vainglorious ambition rather than to malice but this very certificate produced on your behalf has greatly aggravated your offence since it is therein declared that the said opinion is contrary to the holy scripture and yet you have dared to treat of it to defend it and to argue that it is probable nor is there any extenuation in the license artfully and cunningly extorted by you since you did not intimidate the command imposed upon you but whereas it appeared to us that you had not disclosed the whole truth with regard to your intentions we thought it necessary to proceed to the rigorous examination of you in which without any prejudice to what you had confessed and which is above detailed against you with regard to your said intention you answered like a good catholic therefore having seen and maturely considered the merits of your cause with your said confessions and excuses and everything else which ought to be seen and considered we have come to the underwritten final sentence against you invoking therefore the most holy name of our lord jesus christ and of his most glorious virgin mother mary by this our final sentence which sitting in council and judgment for the tribunal of the reverend masters of sacred theology and doctors of both laws our assessors we put forth in this writing touching the matters and controversies before us between the magnificent charles sincerus doctor of both laws fiscal proctor of this holy office of the one part and you galileo galilei an examined and confessed criminal from this present writing now in progress as above of the other part we pronounce judge and declare that you the said galileo by reason of these things which have been detailed in the course of this writing and which as above you have confessed have rendered yourself vehemently suspected by this holy office of heresy that is to say that you believe and hold the false doctrine and contrary to the holy and divine scriptures namely that the sun is the centre of the world and that it does not move from east to west and that the earth does move and is not the centre of the world also that an opinion can be held and supported as probable after it has been declared and finally decreed contrary to the holy scripture 
and consequently that you have incurred all the censures and penalties enjoined and promulgated in the sacred canons and other general and particular constitutions against delinquents of this description from which it is our pleasure that you be absolved provided that first with a sincere heart and unfeigned faith in our presence you abjure curse and detest the said errors and heresies and every other error and heresy contrary to the catholic and apostolic church of rome in the form now shown to you but that your grievous and pernicious error and transgression may not go altogether unpunished and that you may be made more cautious in future and may be a warning to others to abstain from delinquencies of this sort we decree that the book of the dialogues of galileo galilei be prohibited by a public edict and we condemn you to the formal prison of this holy office for a period determinable at our pleasure and by way of salutary penance we order you during the next three years to recite once a week the seven penitential psalms reserving to ourselves the power of moderating commuting or taking off the whole or part of the said punishment and penance and so we say pronounce and by our sentence declare decree and reserve in this and in every other better form and manner which lawfully we may and can use so we the subscribing cardinals pronounce felix cardinal d'ascoli guido cardinal bentivoglio desiderio cardinal di cremona antonio cardinal s onofrio Bellinghero, Cardinal Gessi, Fabrizio, Cardinal Verospi, Martino, Cardinal Ginetti. End of The Sentence of the Inquisitions on Galileo Galilei. Read by Avaii in September 2009. The Abjuration of Galileo Galilei. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Abjuration of Galileo I, Galileo Galilei, son of the late Vincenzo Galilei, of Florence, aged seventy years, being brought personally to judgment, and kneeling before you, most eminent and most reverend lords cardinals, general inquisitors of the universal Christian Republic against heretical depravity, having before my eyes the holy gospels which I touch with my own hands, swear that I have always believed, and now believe, and with the help of God will in future believe, every article which the holy catholic and apostolic church of rome holds teaches and preaches but because i had been enjoined by this holy office altogether to abandon the false opinion which maintains that the sun is the centre and immovable and forbidden to hold defend or teach the said false doctrine in any manner and after it had been signified to me that the said doctrine is repugnant with the holy scripture I have written and printed a book in which I treat of the same doctrine now condemned and adduce reasons with great force in support of the same without giving any solution and therefore have been judged grievously suspected of heresy that is to say that I held and believed that the sun is the center of the world and immovable and that the earth is not the center and movable willing therefore to remove from the minds of your eminences and of every catholic christian this vehement suspicion rightfully entertained towards me with a sincere heart and unfeigned faith i abjure curse and detest the said errors and heresies and generally every other error and sect contrary to the said holy church and i swear that I will never more in future say or assert anything verbally or in writing which may give rise to a similar suspicion of me. But if I shall know any heretic or any one suspected of heresy, that I will denounce him to this holy office or to the inquisitor and ordinary of the place in which I may be. I swear, moreover, and promise that I will fulfill and observe fully all the penances which have been or shall be laid on me by this holy office. But if it shall happen that I violate any of my said promises, oaths and protestations, which God avert, 
I subject myself to all the pains and punishments which have been decreed and promulgated by the sacred canons and other general and particular constitutions against delinquents of this description. So may God help me, and his holy gospels which I touch with my own hands. I, the above-named Galileo Galilei, have abjured, sworn, promised, and bound myself, as above, and in witness thereof with my own hand have subscribed this present writing of my abjuration, which I have recited word for word. At Rome in the convent of Minerva, 22nd of June, 1633, I, Galileo Galilei, have abjured as above with my own hand. End of the Abjuration of Galileo Galilei Read by Avai in September 2009